Good morning, quadcopter 101 here. What I got for you today is a neat new quadcopter. This is the Hubson H507A X4 Star. Now, what is the X4 Star? Well, you look at it, you say, oh, it's a camera quadcopter. Yeah, it is. It's got a 720p camera, but this does not come with a controller. There is no controller with this quadcopter. This is entirely controlled via Wi-Fi FPV. Now, a lot of people say, oh, Wi-Fi FPV. Well, this one is actually something special compared to most other Wi-Fi FPV flyers. Uh, this runs using the Hubson X4 app. I, th I think it's <laughs> X-Hubson app. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> it's X-Hubson app. I had a brain uh, tooth there for a second. But the X-Hubson app is available on Google Play and also on um, iTunes. But that uh, is the main way to control this quadcopter, through your phone or through a tablet. Now this has special features that most other quadcopters that are, you know, the toy grade Wi-Fi do not have in that this has a built-in GPS system, okay? And using the GPS on your phone or on your tablet, um, you can use this for follow me mode, for circle me mode, and even for waypoint flying. That's what's special about it. You can do advanced type of Wi-Fi flying that most other toy grade Wi-Fi flyers cannot do. And that's what we're going to demonstrate here today, here shortly. Uh, let's go over real quickly uh, things on the camera. Um, it uses a micro SD card slot, which is right there. I have a little 8 gigabyte uh, micro SD card in there for today's flight. Um, it comes with a 550 milliamp per hour 7.6 volt battery, which is kind of unusual for a light bulb. It's usually 7.4 volt labeled. But this one is saying 7.6 volts, 500 milliamp or 4.18 watt hour. <laughs> so it is a proprietary battery, unfortunately. Uh, you are going to need to buy, if you want to keep on flying, you're going to need to buy extra batteries from Hubson to go with this because I sincerely doubt that uh, third party uh, vendors will come out with uh, batteries for this quadcopter. It does have a USB port on the side here for upgrading the firmware if you've got firmware issues. And keeping in mind that this is a follow on to the H502. 2E and H502S. Um, this is very similar to those previous quadcopters. Uh, and with that in mind, this probably will have motor issues if you don't check the props before and after every flight. I highly recommend you spin these props by hand to check for any binding in the gears, indicating that there is dirt in the gears. And if there is, do not fly. Pop off these. Uh, protective uh, guards here and clear out any sand or dirt particles which may be stuck between the gear teeth until these do spin freely. Otherwise, I guarantee you will burn out motors. I know a lot of people have already discovered if you fly with, dirty, with dirt in the gears, you burn out your motors and burn them out repeatedly until you clear those gears. Um, one thing though I noticed is that this has a different design landing pad than the H502's uh, E and S in that there's no little hole here, no little vent hole like they, the others had. That little vent hole let in the dirt and sand. So, you know, that was a bad feature and it looks like they corrected it, getting rid of that little hole. Okay, let's go for a flight of the H507A and see how it performs. Hope you enjoy this flight. Okay, I have the quadcopter turned on. Uh, to turn it on, there's a little button that you hold down for about three seconds until it, uh, or four or five seconds until it energizes. But there's one, one thing I want you to hear. Hear that high-pitched whining? That's normal for the, all these Hubson H502s and this H507. Um, that is, I don't know exactly what that is, but I hear that with my H502E. I hear that with my H502S. That's just something there that you're going to have to live with. And once the motors are started, you can't hear it, or once you're uh, more than a few feet away, you can't hear that whining. Okay, we're going to start this up. I got the x and app started, and I am actually going to start recording my screen on my uh, Shield K1 uh, tablet. Hitting record and start. And recording has started. And the next thing we need to do is select the particular quadcopter. And we don't have the Hubson H501A. We have the 507. And selecting it and then hitting enter. Okay. And going to camera. And motor is locked. And first thing we need to do is geomagnetic calibration. So I'm going to put my pad on the ground here. And put it in the shadow so I can see it. And then I'm going to rotate my quadcopter like so until it says to go vertically. Then rotate it like so. And quadcopter has been calibrated. So putting it down. So the magnetic, magnetic compass has been calibrated. Now we need to bind this controller 
to the current device, white. And next, we're going to check the GPS accuracy. Hitting next. Good GPS accuracy, so we're good to go. Now, there's only so much flight time that I'm going to get out of this thing here. Uh, with that in mind, there's only one feature. I'm going to demonstrate these features separately, uh, these advanced features of this quadcopter. And today, what I wanted to demonstrate is not follow me or orbit mode, which we've seen with so many other quadcopters. I wanted to do waypoint flying. And let's put this in the shade so I can see. And what I am going to do, before I came out here, I downloaded this map onto, onto the, I opened the app and downloaded it onto my computer since we, I don't have any internet access out here. Now this map was downloaded via my Wi-Fi at home. And I came out here and it's ready to go. So now I'm going to hit draw. And we are going to fly around ourselves here. And let's see, drive up there, down here. And let's see how accurate this is. Go up here and then come back home. Well, part of the way home. <laughs> Let's clear that one. That didn't go all the way. Delete. Trash can. Clear waypoints. Correct. Let's come back in a little bit. And hit draw. Go here. Down that road. Up here. And then home. Okay. And hit done. And that submits this to the... Okay. Hit takeoff first. <laughs> so we'll hit takeoff. Yes. Take off. Okay, it goes into the air. Let's check its GPS. See if it hold, it's holding position. It's holding position, then I'm gonna hit done. And it's in waypoint mode. It's gonna enter it, I'm gonna hit okay. Let's see what it does. And hit record too with my camera. <laughs> camera, I wanna record. Go back to waypoint mode. Done. Make sure there's no obstacle. I hit OK. Oh, maybe I hit the submit first. Done. Okay, do I need to go up higher? Let's see if I need. Let's go up a little higher then. Three meters, it said. That's at least three meters. Okay, going back, coming out of that, going back to this, going back to waypoint mode. Okay, we are in waypoint mode. Hitting done. Hitting okay. <laughs> it's not doing anything. <laughs> Hit OK one more time. OK, that's it. Coming back down. We're going to land it and I'm going to submit another waypoint. And it's shutting down the motors. Off. I'm not sure, folks, why that waypoint didn't work. We're going to try it one more time. It's on the ground. Um, hitting delete of all the waypoints I got right now and turning off my joysticks. And hitting delete. Delete them all. Okay. And hitting draw again. We'll use this one instead. And drawing from the quadcopter. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Hitting draw. And drawing from the quadcopter. Okay. Four different points. And let's turn that camera off, on and off again. Stopping the camera. 
starting the camera again, going back to control mode, and going back to map, and submitting, send successful, and taking off, okay, take off. And we want to go a bit higher, so I'm going to select the joysticks and take it up higher. Right about there, turning off the joysticks. And then hitting done. And okay. Oh, there we go. It's doing something now. <laughs> Let's see if it flies to the four different waypoints that I gave it. It's turning itself. Up there, it's up at least three three meters up, or <laughs> ten meters up. Going down, now I set it to go down to about there. Go over here to the left. Let's see a turn. It's, it looks like it's spending about ten seconds at each spot. I think there's a, an option that you can go in there and uh, tell it to stop. Now it's going over there. And it's stopping over there. And then it's going to turn after about ten seconds. And then it's going to come back to the fourth position, or the third position, which is right there, <laughs> and stopping itself. Okay, I'm going to go into the menu app and turn off this 10 second delay between each flight, or each position it goes to, and then it comes back to its original position, supposedly, and stops itself there. Okay, now I'm going to land it. And let's see it come home. Uh, I, I just hit a return to home on it. How much? Okay, I got 42% left. I'm going to land it here to save its motors. And we're going to try another mission on this. Now that I figured this out. I don't like landing in sand like that. But let's see it stop itself. I'm going to give it a chance to stop itself. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to put it back on the landing pad one more time. And spin each, these props since it landed in sand. They're all good. We're going to give it a farther mission now. We're going to go further down that road there. Let's see. Okay, we got more people coming in here, but that's fine. We're going to fly. Um, right now, I'm going to set the waypoints again. We got 42% left of power. I'm going to draw a farther out waypoint or for, further distance flight route. It goes down here, over here, up here. And then back home again. Let's see how this one works. Let's. Uh, we need to submit it. The waypoint radius has exceeded defined limit. Some waypoints in this mission have exceeded limit. Do you want to? Yeah, we got to delete that. So we can't go that far out, far out with that one waypoint there. But th uh, these three waypoints are close enough. So we're hitting submit. So it's going to be a three waypoint mission. And we submitted it already. Let's submit it one more time to make sure it went. Send successful. We're getting takeoff, taking off, making sure my camera is recording. It's recording. It's going back up again. Okay, hitting waypoint mode. The aircraft is about to enter. Hit it. Okay. And done. It's only 37% battery level. It doesn't want to go. Okay. So, I got one waypoint mission out of it. Unfortunately, the battery is exceeded that limit. It takes a while to figure this out. That's why I want to do this step by step. Uh, but this is part one of the, the review. I'm going to send this review out and look, look how it's going like this. When you see this toilet bowl effect like that, that means it needs to be recalibrated also. So, right now we are at uh, 34, 33% flight. I would have set it out on that. but. Unfortunately, it doesn't, it's telling me not to. So we are going to stop the video and we are going to just land it right where it's at. So that was waypoint flying. <laughs> um, you know, 
the battery on this is slightly larger or slightly smaller well it's a good <laughs> at least 100 150 milliamp per hour smaller than h502e um, that gives you reduced flight time as compared to the h502e and the h502s along with you know this has uh uh, Wi-Fi FPV transmission and I guess that uh, kind of cuts down on the flight time of this so you don't have a lot of flight time with this that's why I really need to do this one step at a time to show you what this can do but it does have a waypoint flying mode I did get one successful waypoint mission in there uh, next uh, view, views we'll be doing um, circle me and also follow me so hope you enjoy the follow-on reviews to this good morning quadcopter 101 okay we did a demonstration of waypoint flying with the um, or Hudson H507A. Today we're going to be doing follow me and possibly circle me mode. We're going to see if we can do that today. Um, we are at a different spot as you can see here. But uh, I already did the intro to this quadcopter so right now we are ready to actually go. So so I'm going to just fire it right up and we're going to try out the follow me mode first. So hope you enjoy this flight. Okay I have the Hudson X Hudson app started. We're going to select H507A since we're flying an H507A. And then we hit enter. And then we hit camera, since we're going to be using the follow me mode. And uh, right now it wants us to do the geomagnetic calibration, so we got to do this stuff first. <laughs> turning it, turning it, turning it, turning it, turning it. And as before, notice the high-pitched sound. That's true of all these little brushless, or brushed Hobson <laughs> GPS quadcopters. They have that high-pitched sound. Now we need to bind the aircraft. And checking the GPS accuracy. Good GPS accuracy. So we're good to go there. And again, we want camera view. We are in camera view. And I'm going to record video, starting the video recording now. And we are going to take off first. So bringing the sticks down and out. And take into the air. Yeah, let's see how good our GPS accuracy is. It seems to be good. I'm going to go over here, folks. Because I'm going to do follow me. And I'm turning the quadcopter toward me. And I see myself. Going a little bit further away. And centering myself in the position of the camera. And hitting, selecting the intelligent modes here. Hitting follow mode and hitting OK. Let's see if it actually follows me. It seems to be. <laughs> I'm over there. Let's go up a little higher. And is it still following me? No, we get a little bit of a wiggle there because of the accuracy, I'm, I'm guessing, of this. Had a little bit of a glitch there, but let's see if it still follows me around <laughs> the field. Just backing up. See, I don't have to do nothing to get it to follow me. It just does it. Let's see if it can keep up with me. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> I'm not going to run too hard, folks. Got to maintain my breath here for this video. So that's the follow me mode. Let's try the the circle me mode. Let's go over here and get away from any poles. and hit orbit mode. Okay, it's better for a minimum height of three meters. We're good enough here. Follow me mode, exit it. And we'll enter orbit mode. Orbit mode. Okay, do I have to tell it where to orbit? Oh no, there it goes. It's orbiting. <laughs> Just a nice slow orbit though. <laughs> How about if I send it up higher? 
just orbiting the area <laughs> rotating view of the area okay let's land it now I want to save battery power one thing I notice about this quadcopter it yeah okay land it uses up battery power pretty quickly while it's in the air so you want to plan your uh, particular flights while up there now I want to do that um, circle me again but this time orbit mode okay let's go into settings here folks and let's see if there's a setting for orbit mode well I didn't see any specific setting for orbit mode there to make the uh, radius larger or smaller but we're going to try to play with it just to see if we can get something so we need to go into the air first so taking off one more time And hitting orbit mode again. Hit OK. Oh, I, I missed that. It showed what the distance was. Oh, we got to land. Is it going to automatically land on this warning of low battery? Probably is. So let's hit stop recording right there. And landing. Hitting OK to land. and shuts down so you know that's the one limitation of this little quadcopter its battery or its flight time is not very long it does do waypoints it does do follow me it does do circle me but again its flight time is not very long so you are probably going to definitely need extra batteries to keep yourself going out in the field with this so that's it's one limitation that i don't like i like everything else about it except that so hope you enjoyed this flight this quadcopter 101 signing out with the h507a <laughs> see ya